Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Let's talk about Spider-Man Miles Morales for the PlayStation 4 a little bit. Um, really enjoying my time with this game so far, which I was wondering if I would be able to because apart from a glitch that allowed me to build up just a ton of experience uh, in, in a short period of time in the first game, I wasn't able to enjoy the original game uh, the way that I wanted to. I didn't feel powerful enough. Uh, I, I didn't feel that superhero fantasy in the way that I wanted to, even on the lowest difficulties. But uh, So I was wondering going into this one, Am I going to be able to make my, make my way through this game? Because there were so many things I did enjoy about the original PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game. And it was one of the few games I've played in my life that really got me engaged in the story, which was very surprising for me. Anyway, uh, the long and short of my experience of eventually with, play, with the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man is I really enjoyed it. And I'm happy to report that I'm really enjoying my time with this one. And in significant part... That is because of the difficulty customization options, which I will get to in just a little bit. But first, let me just say some general things about it, starting with the story, uh, which I, I will say almost nothing about, except that you should play Spider-Man for PS4 before you start into this one. I don't know that it's necessary to play the DLC. I haven't finished playing the DLC for Spider-Man, so maybe there's some stuff in there that I kind of feel like is missing from this game. I don't know, but uh, but but it seems to me that you can just play the the, the base game of uh, Spider-Man on PS4. You'll be ready to go with this one, but you definitely don't want to skip it before coming into this game. Um, it is kind of missing, in my view a proper origin story for Miles Morales, getting his Spider-Man powers and kind of those first steps into becoming Spider-Man. Now, you do see his origin ultimately, uh, you at least see, I mean, minor spoilers for the original Spider-Man PS4 game, you at least see him get bit by the spider in the first PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game, but you don't see him dealing with the the discovery himself of, oh my gosh, I think I have Spider-Man powers. We just cut to him revealing to Peter Parker that he's got Spider-Man powers, you know. And I really want, for, for games that are based on Spider-Man, whether it's Peter Parker or Miles Morales, I want to really be engaged in that character and their journey and how they feel about their journey. And I think we got a lot of that in Peter Parker's story, but I think they're, they're, they've missed showing me some really pivotal moments in Miles Morales' first steps into the world of being a super-powered spider guy. Uh, we also don't see his reveal, at least in the first four hours that I've played, to his friend uh, Genki, which uh, props to the game. I've, I never knew how to pronounce that name before. I've been a fan of the Spider-Man Miles Morales character from the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Never knew how to pronounce that name, so <laughs> thanks for uh, helping me with that. But anyway, uh, but Genki is like his best friend and confidant who is helping him on his missions. He is the guy in the chair, you know, as we saw in the Spider-Man movies recently, uh, Peter Parker's best friend in that is based on Genki from the, from the comics. Uh, and uh, to, I would have loved to have seen that reveal, but they, that's just, that happened completely off screen. I don't know if they'll show it to me in a flashback later on in the Miles Morales Spider-Man game or not, but I feel like, gosh, why would you, why would you not show us that moment. Um, so that's kind of a shame. But I, I'm happy to say it's still a very personal story. And the action that he's in as Spider-Man is very much tied to his personal relationships. And so, uh, and I've just started uncovering some of that. And I know where some of some other parts of it will likely go, given my familiarity with the comic books. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very happy that all the pieces seem to be in place for a very personal story that has very dramatic stakes later in the game. We'll see if that's how it actually turns out for me. Uh, what I one thing I really like about the the opening hours of this game is that Miles is uh, he is still very much a rookie as Spider Man, and he doesn't have the hang of swinging like Peter Parker does at the very beginning of the uh, PS4 Spider Man game. And so uh, in the I, at first I wondered. Am I doing something wrong? Because he would biff it every once in a while instead of landing the way I wanted him to land. And I realized after a few hours, hours in the game, I was like, no, I think that was just happening randomly. Uh, they would choose moments where he wouldn't stick the landing. He would hit the top of a building and then roll and have to pick up.
pick himself back up again. But now, uh, an hour or so further into the game, I'm not doing anything different, and he's not biffing it as much. So I think that's just kind of a built-in thing into the very first, like, hour and a half to two hours of the game as he's navigating, web-slinging and stuff, that, uh, that just show you that he really is still getting the hang of this. And that's really charming and helps me to invest in the character as well. But I am glad that they, you know, two hours, three hours in, he's not having those problems anymore. Uh, as far as the visuals go, I'm playing this game on a uh, base PlayStation 4. I really am impressed with the uh, original Spider-Man PS4 game, and the same is true of this game. It just really looks great. Uh, you're going to be hearing lots of buzz, no doubt, uh, right now about the PS5 version, but rest assured, if you're playing even on a base PS4 and you were happy with the visuals uh, of the original Spider-Man PS4 game, you're going to, I think, be just as happy with the visuals in this game. They did, you know, did not abandon the PS4 version in favor of really spending all their time and energy on the PS5 version or the PS4 Pro version or whatever. It looks and plays really nice on a, on a base PlayStation 4, in my experience. So, uh, yeah, don't don't be sold on the idea that you need a PlayStation 5 to really experience this game in a great way. Uh, they also have some nice animations that they've added for Miles Morales, particularly when he is web swinging. That's when I notice it the most. He's got some uh, different fighting animations too, uh, but but I notice it mostly when he's swinging around, and that's nice. There are certainly a number of combat moves and animations that are carried over uh, almost exactly from the original PS4 game. So it's not like a complete reinvention, um, but uh, there's enough new in the animations for how he looks when he's moving around and fighting that make him feel like, yes, this is a guy with spider powers that are very much uh, almost the same as Peter Parker's, but it's a different guy, and so, you know, it's, it feels different enough to me, so I like that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, I couldn't read my handwriting for a second there. I'm less impressed with the facial animation so far. Now, maybe that's because late in the game of the, P the original game, I, I was getting invested in the story in ways that surprised me, and so maybe I'm remembering through rose-colored lenses the facial animations and the performances in the final hours of that original game, but this one's starting out, they're good, they're solid, they're, they're better than uh, the, what Ubisoft has been doing with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, but I, I don't feel like they are as quite as nuanced um, as I remember the original PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game being. As far as the audio goes, uh, nice, solid voice performances, you know, much like the first game. It's got a nice uh, urban soundtrack. I'm not normally a fan of hip-hop or rap or anything like that, but I, they're tr I think they're trying to play up... Um, Miles' kind of backstory, his, his culture, and where he kind of comes from a bit, and just giving it a different vibe. It reminds me a little bit of what they did with the soundtrack for Black Panther, where they would merge uh, orchestral elements um, and hip-hop sounds into just this nice kind of uh, new breed of, of sound that was really cool. And in a similar way, they're kind of bringing back the orchestral things, motifs, and, well, maybe not motifs. I, I've, I haven't noticed yet if they have an actual new theme for Miles Morales or if it's the recycled Spider-Man th theme from the first one, but just with some hip-hop beats thrown in and other kind of like post-production uh, hip-hop effects and stuff. So, uh, but I mean, even though I don't seek out that kind of music, I really like it when it's adding flavor to a movie or a video game. And so in this case, I really like the, the mood that it creates for me and the cultural tone, I guess, for lack of a better way to describe it, uh, that it's doing, that it's creating for me. So that's, that's been really cool. Uh, as far as the gameplay goes, it's very much the same kind of Spider-Man experience that you had the first time around, but with just a few modifications here and there. Most notable among the changes are his Venom and Cloaking skills. And Venom is kind of a weird uh, choice, given the, the, the villain Venom in the, in the Spider-Man lore. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's this um, bioelectric zapping ability that he has that's also in the comics. And they play it up visually a lot more in this video game. And I think that that does differentiate him more from uh, Peter Parker's type of Spider-Man and his power set, but from the, a comic book standpoint, at least what I've read in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, I haven't followed Miles Morales since he joined the regular uh, Marvel Comics continuity, but uh, it, it seems overblown visually. I get why they do it, because it's a video game and, and to set him apart more, you know, so I understand the reasons why, but 
I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I guess I should say that I'm not super sold on that as a power of Miles Morales anyway. I, I don't need him to have a different, any different powers from Peter Parker. Uh, what's interesting to me is Miles as a character, you know. So, um, let's see what else. Oh yeah, he also has this cloaking ability to turn invisible for a short period of time, which is kind of cool. And so they uh, play around with stealth a little bit uh, using that ability instead of the actual like stealth missions that they had with MJ and with Miles Morales in the original game. I'm really glad to see that those are gone and so far I haven't run into any like stealth missions that have insta fail situations where it's like if you're spotted you're you're you lose. The only time I've run into that is in an optional activity that you can do which uh, is useful for unlocking more things related to stealth but so far in the story missions in the game I haven't run into a situation where it's like you cannot be seen or you will fail the mission. So uh, I've really been pleased with that. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, th so there's there's a lot of different things going on in the skill tree that are related to the Venom ability especially, but also some stuff related to the, the cloaking and visibility thing as well. Uh, and so I, I think that there's definitely reasons... You, you know, you're gonna, you're not gonna be just regaining all of Peter Parker's skill sets again with somebody different. You know, so the, so if you're wanting a different type of power set, different type of gameplay experience, they do bring that to the forefront. Um, I think as much as they can to differentiate and give you a different experience. Uh, but I mean, many things are the same. You still have many of the same open world activities. Instead of backpacks uh, scattered around the city, you're you're looking for these time capsules that Miles and an old friend of his planted around the city. Uh, and similarly, you get them, and he's like, oh oh yeah, I remember this, and you know, you, you get little details fleshed out from his past a bit. Um, let's see here. There are um, some environmental puzzles that are part of the, the gameplay. Thankfully, they're not the abstract puzzles, like the hacking puzzles or the laboratory puzzles that you had to do with Peter Parker, which were very skippable, and I appreciated that in the original game. This one, they're environmental, there's a hint system, so I don't think it's going to be uh, frustrating to me in the same way as the other ones would have been, but they're not skippable. You you do have to do them. Thankfully, like I said, they do have a hint system in there that so far seems like it's going to guide me through. I'm just not interested in puzzles. I'm just like, just put the marker on something. Tell me what to move. Tell me what to pull. Tell me what to push. Just tell me what to do. I want to be done with this dumb puzzle, you know. And so far, I, I think that they are going to uh, meet me there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. As far as customization goes, this is like the biggest deal for me with this game. Um, you have a the same difficulty uh, levels that are available in the original PS4 game, but in this one now I could be mistaken because uh, I didn't I don't ever remember getting knocked out in the lowest difficulty when I was finishing up Spider-Man PS4. I came back to it just a couple months ago and really just made a beeline for the end of that game. Really enjoyed my time with it. I don't remember ever getting knocked out in combat, so it's possible this was part of that original difficulty setting um, that they added for the first game, but. Uh, this was the first time I noticed it in one of these games. On the lowest difficulty, which I think is called Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, you cannot be knocked out in combat. When your health goes all the way down to zero, you just stay in combat. You get battered around and stuff, but you don't get knocked out. You don't see a fail state. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't run into fail states in this game. You can. If you're in a situation where you have to save a civilian in a certain amount of time before the bad guys start doing their thing and killing the civilian, then you can get an insta-fail. And I imagine there are one or two other types of situations that I'm likely to run into at some point uh, that will be insta-fail uh, triggers. But... I am. I was really pleased to see that uh, because when I am really invested in a, a game for its story, I want to, especially in that type of game, I want to be able to see it through to the end. And there's nothing more frustrating to me than to be invested in a game story uh, and then realize, or some other aspect of the game that makes me really feel like I want to see this through the end, and then realize, crap, it's getting too hard and too frustrating for me to be able to finish this, and so I have to kind of leave that meal, leave that dessert unfinished. And that's a, that's a really, really frustrating thing to me. So uh, I was really pleased to see that. Also, many of the other options have returned, like you can totally eliminate QTEs if you don't want to have to do those but timed button presses, which I appreciate that because I want to watch those cool cinematic moments. I don't want to be staring at the screen and trying to quickly go, triangle, triangle square, triangle circle. I don't want to do any of that crap. 
you got this cool animation you want to show me, don't have me locking my eyes on dumb button prompts. Just show me the cool moment, and then I'll get back on the gameplay after that, you know. So to see the uh, ability to turn those off and just have them auto-fulfilled for you is really awesome. Uh, you can also hold buttons instead of hammering buttons for certain in certain situations that, that call for that. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't think I could be much more pleased with the customization options in the game. It's really cool. I know that the, the motivation for a lot of these options is for uh, people with disabilities so that they can still have a, a good experience with the game. But for people like me that just, you know, don't like, do, either don't have the skill level or don't have the patience for certain types of games uh, and certain types of gameplay elements, these are wonderful things, wonderful things. Um, I think that all games should come with these kinds of options. Sure, turn off the trophies, whatever. I don't need any bragging rights. That's not what I play games for. Uh, so, yeah, seeing these kinds of options, I really hope they become much, much more popular. Um, as far as any themes that might trigger some worthwhile thought or conversation, I think there's... I feel about it the way I did at this point um, in the original Spider-Man PS4 game, where it's like I see some things in place where it could uh, play with some themes and could flesh out some themes in an interesting way, but I don't, I don't have enough to say definitively if it will or not. Um, there could be themes related to discovering the ugly side of someone that you really care about or that you're really close to in your life. Uh, there could be themes about really good relationships suddenly going bad and feeling like feeling like you're betrayed by someone or like you never really knew them, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, if you've had like a difficult relationship experience like that, whether romantically or with a family member or a friend or something like that, uh, I think that there could be some things in here that will speak to that. It'll be interesting to see how Miles handles those situations. Um, he still seems like a really good stand-up guy that's just trying to do the right thing. In some ways, I really see that in his character more strongly than I did in Peter Parker's character. Part of that maybe is because of his naivete, but whatever the reason, I appreciate it being there. This guy, he just wants, to, he just really wants to do the right thing. You know, it's not, uh, uh, it, I don't get the sense that it's guilt or regret that's driving him, which in at least a uh, uh, part is what drives Peter Parker. He just seems like a guy who really wants to do the right thing. And that's, uh, that's a hard motivation to make work and feel relatable uh, in fiction. And I feel like they do it well in here, uh, in this game with Miles Morales. Um, there might also be something about like developing self-confidence and maybe some philosophically, you know, uh, drawing from the idea of self-actualization. I, I don't know. I'd, I'd be a little bit surprised. The marketing certainly seems to be about self-empowerment. It's all about yourself. Be yourself and be awesome and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just be you or whatever. Uh, so there might be some kind of uh, humanist uh, uh, undercurrents, but I... I don't sense them strongly at all. In fact, I pick that up much more from the marketing than what I've played so far in the game. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't have enough. Don't have enough right now to really say anything more about the themes. Uh, as far as, like, my summary thoughts on this, this is a, uh, it's, it's a question of when, not if, I get this game at this point. Because I was just thrilled to see those difficulty options, and I really like this character. I've liked him from the comic books, and I, I think I might even like him more in this game than I enjoyed him in the comic books. But um, yeah, it's having a great time with it. And the, the thing that's drawing me to getting it maybe sooner rather than later is that it takes place... Oh, Sony, those stinkers. They totally knew what they were doing. Uh, <laughs> it takes place during Christmas. And this time of year, I'm always looking for games that, that are Christmassy, that have some Christmas element to them. And those aren't near as common as games that, as movies, you know, geek movies that have Christmas elements in them. And so for this game to be set during the Christmas season and to have Christmas referenced so much, especially in the opening hour and a half, and to see Christmas decorations everywhere, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to have to buy this game. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> so anyway, having a great time with it. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts in the comments below, but that's all. I have to say for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>